Hi. Hi. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. What have we got here then? Uh, well, we've just um, come back from Spain. Not straight back, obviously. We've been sat around um, touching ourselves. Uh, but yeah, we're just down at Crescent. Um, we're just getting our R1 hashtag R1 uh, out of the van, and then we're going to go and have a chat to the intelligent people that know what they're talking about. On um, a bit of a debrief, isn't it? Really, from yeah. our, from our shakedown. Yeah. I mean, we we I mean, we've kind of got some good points and bad points, and talk to the pros who know what they're doing. Yeah. And I'll just say, whenever I show an image of my any bike in the back of here on a paddock stand, people are like, "Oh my god, you can't! Oh my god, you can't strap it on a paddock stand!" It's been 15 years I've been doing it like this, and if you've got a front shock, there's no f-ing way. Well, you can do what you want, but I shut mean, up. I personally wouldn't put a chock and a stand on. I just do one or the other. That's just me. Yeah, but I, but but it's when it's got a stand and a chock, it's 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 absolutely semantics. Solid. Semantics. Solid. Get her yeah. out. Brilliant for the size down, but everyone does it. I do it. It's more about the, the ground. You're probably just ruining the really nice uh, tiles. Not mine. Hi, James. Hello. What's your role here now? Sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I'd say a little bit of everything. I work more on the pro shop side, so perfect. Race bike, track bike, fancy road bike stuff. From use my limited knowledge and probably quite vast experience I suppose on especially in recent years working with the Yamahas and the R1 especially um, just to add a little bit of value really to the customers and what they're add a bit of meat to to what we are offering you know it, it, it's easy to kind of billy bullshit stuff and but, no, but I can back a lot of things up and say you particularly need this and maybe give a few more reasons and uh, yeah add value to to people working and buying parts and Yamahas, you know, we do everything from basic bikes to full blown, very close to super bike spec yeah. stuff. So it's- so, um, so basically you're gonna help us. I'm you're, gonna try. You're gonna, we, we yes. can tell you some issues. Yeah. Some good stuff as well, obviously, loads of good stuff, but <clears throat> some issues we're having and then hopefully you can help us with a solution. That's the plan. Okay. And then, but then the riding side over to you, so don't, don't, <laughs> well, don't blame me if you can't yeah. reach the lap times you're in. No. You know, I well, we, will, so we, we will blame you, so <laughs> don't worry. Well, the thing is, so we've got... Hello, mate. All right. How, How are you? Doing? Nice. Right on cue. Right. 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 Good to see How are you? Yeah. Very good. Well done on the BMW thing, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Did all right, didn't you? Yeah. It was all right. Not bad for a fat lad. Yeah, for a fat old yeah. boy. Yeah, it's yeah. quite good. Let me know when you need me. If you need me. It's actually your Helen's. So that's a kit swing on. That is, yeah. Actually made by Suto, but it's... Um, Where are we, we putting that in it? Is that ours? That c- could be. You've got like seven grand or whatever it would be. It's, uh, well, actually, the Suto swing arm on the parts list wasn't that much. It was like that's a five pro, and a half? Yeah, that's a basic Suto. That's that's a kit swing arm made by oh. Suto. So oh, that would okay. be different to... That would be quite different, yeah. yeah. But then you obviously need the linkage and everything to go with it. It's opens up a whole other can of worms so and then it's not for us it's not, not for not, us no no just well, look at this not. look at this <laughs> and that's all going on this beauty yeah, here is it will be yeah yeah that's like a, a sort of our next project bike i suppose it's quite a cool thing to be involved in in making these super high spec bikes and uh i'm sure that i'll get to, to ride it so it's sort of like so you're the test pilot for all of them not, like you do all, like, a, you do like but, um, a test run, do you? Like a shakedown? This one I'd like, I think I will. The other one, we are sort of, we've had like a, a development bike. I say a development bike. It's just a bit of a communal R1 we've had here at Crescent. That, um, a slag. Top, yeah. Basically, <laughs> top top rack's been through it a few times. Has and, uh, oh, you know, Paul's Roger used it. it. I've used it abroad. And, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah. But it's, for, for, it's important to be able to 
talk about the parts and actually have experienced them. Obviously, I race an R1, but uh, I don't always use all the same parts as what we put on the bikes here. So it's important to be able to develop bits and work with like the kit, the kit loom and ECU to, with mapping engine modes and stuff to understand exactly how it works. Because otherwise, someone will ask on the telephone or walk in, and it's like. Mm if I can't answer that and give a valid yeah. sort of answer then it's um, yeah it's like oh I'll come in with five grand I'll just spend five grand for the sake of it rather yeah. than yeah, yeah. I need why, to be able to, why are you spending it yeah. this is what it's going to do yeah, yeah. I, I need to be able to sort of walk the walk and if I'm talking the talk I need to be able to back up what I'm saying you know well so, look let's walk the walk and talk the talk let's walk it on our <laughs> dirty little hussy <laughs> here she is fresh back from the Spanish sunshine I've just about finished cleaning all the brake dust off it because those ZO4 pads, I mean, it was like a two-tone bike. It was just minging. Anyway, I think, I mean, look, amazingly, you, you would have seen the last video uh, that we've just made prior to this. So ultimately, we, like, the bike, I think we got to pretty much our comfortable limit with the, the, the parts, the little pricey parts that we spent on it. You know, we, we both lapped within a tenth of a second of each other which is incredible. Like there's a, we did a back-to-back -back lap and it's like, it's amazing. It's really, really interesting. We're two totally different riders. So I think that just goes to show that we're, without pushing so hard that we're gonna crash, we're at the limit of what we can do with these stock parts. So braking ultimately was where this suffered. Now, whether that was from the ABS, which definitely was um, the, the way all the lines are sort of going, but also su suspension, because you, once you start breaking beyond the limit of the suspension, like the forks are hitting the bottom and causing issues. So help us, what do you do? <laughs> well, yeah, obviously if you're, the, the back wheels lifting you using full fork travel, that is, is an issue and you have to release the brake to get that back. So uh, ultimately, the, the, I would say initially the fork is the, is the issue. If the, the brakes are good enough to hit the bottom of the fork, you need to make the fork better to deal with the better brakes but um a go-to point a lot of these and, and where we a lot of customers the, the brakes calipers and mastering is the first thing they they do and get rid of the abs you know yeah. it's a it's a, it, it's a horrible sensation it's obviously I, i'm sure it's like a, a an eu euro thing they yeah. requirement they have to put in on a bike but you know in gp all world championships they run traction but no one runs abs you know you need that direct you don't want any filter between the rider and the, the brake it's a i had it once on a track day on a stop bike and it's a that terrifying feeling when the abs takes the lever away from you so two benefits of that is obviously feel and uh weight there's a big weight saving in the abs pump which is actually under the seat and quite high up so just kills a few birds with one stone really it shortens the and, and is there anything and can you just pull it out or do you need to so, so is there like something technical you need to plug in its place? Yeah, basically a, a delete module. So it, right. you remove the pump, unplug it, and then plug in a, a, another sort of j um, module that just tricks it to thinking that there's something there, but it's it stops the light coming on. I was going to say, because the R1, it's got probably about 10 metres of lines throughout the bike anyway. And it's probably, you know, it, it definitely suffers. Even with the ABS off, you can feel the lever with all those, the fluid going traveling just 10 miles just, it just spun it just doesn't so feel nice it's is not it? that direct nice you, you've obviously got a lot more line with yeah you, and a lot more fluid to comp that's that can compress you know that when you've just got a direct line from the mouse cylinder down to the caliber mm -hmm. you've only got that short run of fluid and it um it can't you know you, you're working a lot less fluid and compresses right. a lot less so you get better feel so and would you and if you're on a bit of a budget like a lot of this project is about trying to get bang for buck i mean yeah brilliant let's go and spend I mean, what are the caliper, GPRX, what are they, 1,200 quid? Yeah. You know, cost a quarter, master cylinder, 500 quid, line set, you know, you're up to two grand. I race in super stock, so I have to run the stock calipers and master cylinder. And okay. So there's a few things there is fluid, you know, a decent fluid. You know, the, the stock fluid is obviously up to a standard, but it's not race fluid, doesn't deal as well right. with the high temperatures that they get hammering on short circuits and, and is that just so and why is that why does is it expansion hot fluid cold fluid like good fluid bad I think fluid? It, it's more consistently works more consistently at heat it doesn't fade it won't fade as much and it also it won't fatigue as long it's amazing how even though brake fluid isn't exposed to the elements how dirty it can get just transferring between you know right. within the brake system so it's it's a that that will make a not maybe an initial feel uh, difference but it will 
definitely benefit in longevity if you go out and did a 10 lap 20 lap stint then the brakes will fade a lot less with right. decent decent fluid so so there is a super stock solution to that then which is a direct lines fresh fluid good pads and yeah. zeloforce do you use zeloforce uh i use uh, I don't know really know, but we can say it here. I used the <laughs> SBS Compound 2 on my stock bike, which right. was, I back to back them as Z04s, and uh, they're good. I, I can't really, I, I feel they were good. And then at Tolton last week, I rode my super right with the full decent brakes, and it was like, phew, shit, you realize like then the difference, you know, you sort of get used to something. But one silly thing um, is, is like people put these stubby levers on the stock oh, levers. Oh, stop it. The, oh. the stock levers actually pretty decent although it doesn't aesthetically isn't great but it um i try to set move my muscle up the bar a little bit so my fingers i'm pulling on the end of the lever mm. so you get maximum leverage some people if they you know if you're breaking here it's like using a tiny spanner yeah. to under your it's back it's like wheel. a fulcrum isn't it yeah you almost want so the further down the lever you're pulling the, the less effort you're putting in and the more power you're getting which in racing you want to save energy everywhere you can and i'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm especially lazy i suppose in terms of riding style compared to well, some getting old as well mate. yeah so yeah. you just want to make your life as easy as yeah, possible absolutely, so yeah. you can actually you know you can't beat an upgraded mass cylinder and calipers but there is a, a budget way of doing it with braided lines delete the abs remove all the pump and um some decent pads and fluid and you'll okay. that that would be it'd be worth you doing that to, to as a step and yeah. then and then if you're still not happy then Go okay. next. next let's, let's, let's try that first. Okay, it's yeah. a good shout. Yeah, and, all, and and okay, and then so if we're going to keep these stock forks as well, so moving on to the suspension, you were, you were mentioning off camera about adjusting the height of these and dropping it in and trying to again combat the problem of this bike wanting to lift and the rear coming up, yeah. so wanting it to squat. That's what we want more, right? So would you as a as a again another little tweak for free? You yeah. can just drop these forks, right? Yeah, I mean. Uh, and when I started racing, everyone would like bring the forks through the yokes and lower the front of the bike so it would turn really fast. But then you're kind of lift, heightening the rear. And then when you brake hard, it's already, the rear's already high. If you lift the front of a bike by dropping the forks through the yokes, and then it's, it's actually harder for the bike to then pitch over, you know? Mm. So it naturally, in, in, in kind of fit law of physics, it's, it's a much harder for the bike to do a stop here. It kind of, yeah. the, the frame then takes some of the stress and will you're breaking into into something rather than over something, if that makes sense. Yeah. Obviously you still have to carry the, the right spring rate, but it means you can get away with running a perhaps a softer front spring um, and using the, the physics of the chassis and geometry. To yeah, and then having more sensation in the fork to actually be able to feel what's going on underneath yeah. you rather than preloading it out and just I think that's, right I think that's that hand. is that is utterly subjective though because I mean some people work, don't want weight transfer isn't it so they they prefer stiff I, I prefer not as much weight transfer so you know it's it, I think that kind of thing is yeah I yeah I think that's subjective sorry well that's fine yeah that's great it's uh, it's interesting how lap time over the years has gone from massive engine power to yeah. stopping power it's almost like especially with the thousand cc and the power these bikes have now the actual corner speed it's not about going fast around the corners it's getting into the corner as fast as possible mm. and getting out into the next corner as quickly as possible it's kind of it, it you're almost too slow in a corner mm. but but you know the amount of time you're on the side of the tire in it you know at certain tracks this is but um it's just getting from one corner to the other as quickly as possible yeah and while we're on sort of geometry i mean what what's your super stop bike how far is that off this bike so Obviously, stock bike. We haven't touched it. We have. We've obviously done preload and stuff. But we haven't touched geometry. What's your go-to? I, I couldn't give you figures. I could find out, but I would guarantee my the front of my bike will be a lot higher and yeah. the back will be lower than where this is. So it's kind of not just lifting the front. It's uh, we, my bike will be lifted front and lowered rear, which gives you that thing to break against. And the, in the team, we have this uh, the data guys a chassis program and. We can work quite a bit. Obviously, it's not a super bike. The frame, the actual frame's the same, but different swing arm forks, etc. But um, we kind of built my stock bike as close as we could get it geometry-wise to the super bike, which again backs up that that acceleration and braking technique. It's not so much about being in a, in a corner, which obviously Yamaha is good at corner speed. It's known for that. But uh, I think you know we can compromise a little bit extra mid corner for that that extra stability when braking and it's all about keeping the tires on the ground isn't it you don't want wheelie and you don't want endo into a corner no. and i mean and you were mentioning in in spain the the rear of the bike is light isn't it yes. it's everywhere it's light it's light yeah. on the brakes it's light on the gas it's it's light like you had some sort of lift off oversteer 
yeah <laughs> on you know on some worn tires so it's uh, that 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 makes sense and again you know when these come out of the factory they're for bill and bob to be you know having a good fun sunday ride stick your missus on the back i mean yeah. you know it's designed to be able to run another if you're lucky 60 kilos on the back if you're unlucky 100 kilos <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you know well, it depends it's better. You might like that. You might like that, and they might have Everyone, massive. Look, it's subjective. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. it's subjective. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, like spring weights, it's subjective. It's subjective. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. might want to run a stiffy <laughs> or a sloppy. Right. So we've got a shock to go in this. I've yep. got it in the van. We're probably not going to be able to put it in today, but that's going to give us the more adjustable spectrum. Yeah, I mean that shock is right. proper budget, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, and we didn't really play much with the shock because it kind of it did what it did and it, it was all right it was all right wasn't yeah, it? it was fine it was, all right. it was fine and 98 percent of riders would be absolutely fine with this on 98 percent of track days i think it's if you're really trying to go that extra bit that's when you've got to start spending some money mm -hmm. and and you know i think this a standard r1 can i think alex lowe's what well, was an m like lap in what was it 142 142 143 like 8 or something with some yeah. slicks yeah and the world superbike time is what thirty eight uh, quality yeah. poly time. Yeah, not like <laughs> cruising. Yeah, he would have qualified easily on the grid, yeah. easily. Okay, so um, right, what else can we do then? That's a that's a nice cost effective model. I mean, I, I'm not that interested at this point in power. I think, no, no, no. I think uh, the power and the throttle connection is actually really nice. Yeah, even with the I know it looks a bit jank and a bit skanky with that. Yeah, cat. We might get a mid pipe, but we'll never be able to do a UK track day. If we get full system right away, that's this bike out of the UK yeah. scene yeah. forever. So I think um, that's, that's worth noting. Wheelbase, looking at your wheelbase there, that is, these are real sensitive to, you know, if I change one two from my super stop bike, we really try and, um, so I shut those doors. Yeah, I do. So you were saying, James? Uh, yeah, wheelbase, these are really, sensitive to you know even when we're trying to find the right gear in a circuit um one tooth change can make a real difference with wheelie uh i don't know how much wheelie control you're running on on the electronics but um always try and run it right at the back of the swing arm and that helps um obviously helps wheelie but it also when the shock's right and you'll find more when you put the, the better shock in um just gets it into that zone these these bikes i don't know if you felt it yet they have this bizarre like sensation of just drive when they hook up and just go it i still find myself giggling now and I, it's 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 a as a racer it doesn't i have no way of getting the best out of my race bike yet in, in in doing that every corner i get it sometimes i'm like how does it do that and it's i can't even explain it but when you feel it it will you definitely raise your eyebrows in like it's a bizarre feeling but that is something you could gain quite a bit from i think if you can put a 520 chain on and yeah. get that Gear it so you're right at the back of the swing arm. Will um, yeah, because you there's, there's, there's even an extra. It looks like you can actually cut, like modify this. There's actually yeah, that's a that's a modification we do. This one's actually. Oh no, this hasn't been done. Right. But the our, our development bike has. Yeah, you can it's see on here. It's a thin little bit of metal. Yeah, just an engineering guy on this estate who um, does that, and it gives you another 12 mil or something like extra, which doesn't sound a lot, but honestly, five, five, three to five mil can make a doesn't doesn't sound like it would but honestly yeah. it's night and, and day. does that stabilize the bike a bit more as well or it'll give you more rear, slow it'll give you more rear feel because you've got an um and a little bit more control obviously it, basically it's got more leverage on the shock but as a rider it's like them big drift bikes you know it will yeah. it will compromise a little bit perhaps in corner entry or exit but it you'll get more feeling back and uh Especially on a, on a worn tie, you know, during the towards the end uh, of the day. Just talking of the rear end again, the um, we mentioned it off camera earlier. Ch changing wheels on these things is a pain in the body, isn't it? Mm. Um, so, underslung caliper would be nice at some point. I don't know about you, but definitely, I've already specced it up. Have you? Oh, yeah. okay, fine. <laughs> right. but, the, but daddy specced it. Daddy specced it. But there's some price. There's a cheap way of doing it, okay. and then a, the correct way of doing it. Right. So I'm yet to assess what we're going to go for. And comfort and joy. Comfort and joy. So the rest. So we've got the rest of the rear sets. We didn't manage to put those on in uh, Spain because, again, look at look at this. You know, I think when we do the ABS yes. removal, all of this stuff will come off. So we'll then put the, the rear set in, have a bit of adjustability, 
And for me, the other big issue I had was fatigue from these bars because they're so narrow for, for a, a broad gentleman like myself. And I think a, a lot of riders, even standard size, would say that this cockpit is quite cramped. It, it, it's quite, um, it's fatiguing, that's the issue. Yeah, it's fatiguing. And, and yeah. you, you end your, up- Your shoulders end up just collapsing and- mm. if, you, if you tried to do, if you imagine you tried to do a push up like this, it's just not effective, is it? You know, you want- It's harder work. It's harder it work. It gets you fitter. So, so you, want, you want to have that support on your bars. So mm. I think definitely I'd like to get some clip-ons on here as, as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, but I kind of want to keep, as we were saying off camera, as you were yeah. saying, I kind of want to keep all the sort of road stuff. So when we do overtake people on track days, it looks really cool. Yeah, I agree. And it embarrasses them. <laughs> Oh, and maybe that little tank extender. Thing. Definitely. I mean, having looked at the race bikes upstairs a minute ago, and then looking at that, it looks a bit... Is there any... We've got one. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's two of them there. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. They're, they're a good modification. It just gives you something to get your kind of groin into and then break against so that you're, it release, relieves your arms a little bit you're using your groin. It also lowers your centre of gravity. If you imagine your mass of your weight is pushing down mm. from here, it's, it's lower, that it's, it's further away from the front wheel. It's and it's further back because I, I tend up, I, I slide up this a bit too much mm -hmm. and, and that just sort of glues on, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it sticks it's on, amazing, on it's amazing that it's got that much rigidity to hold a, a human being. Oh, this is uh, Mr. Hamilton's bike, is it? It is, yeah. yeah. It doesn't get used too much nowadays, but it's still a cool, a cool thing to have here. Well, should we go and look at some of these parts then? Yeah, let's go, let's go and draw. Let's go and dribble. Oh, and then we, maybe, if we've got time, we might be able to stick this on the dyno oh, yeah. here and do a oh, dyno yeah. run and just and see hear it. Because, hear it purr. I mean, it's definitely had a good old run in now, hasn't it? Should be good. Coming up on Road Bike to Race Bike, we check out the GYTR Pro Bike with Paul Denning and we stick our little beauty on the dyno and get some pretty surprising results. See ya. Shit. Yeah, it's a Jeff special. It's a Jeff special. <laughs>